G'day, Chris here and welcome back to ClickSpring. In this three-part video, I make one of the must-have tools for any clockmaker, a pinion head depthing tool. A few years ago, I met a retired clockmaker who sold me a lot of his tools. And one of the things I picked up from him was his depthing tool. If you need to depth wheels and pinions that are already fixed on their arbors or maybe made from pinion wire, then this is the tool you'd need. But today it's common to build a clock as separate components and then bond them together later. So a simpler tool can do the job while the parts are still separate. And in a lot of ways it's easier to use. So that's what this three part series is all about. Building one of these simpler pinion head depthing tools. Now I'm following Bill Smith's design, there's a link in the description box below. And it's based around what I'm calling the tool bed. It holds these two movable carriers. The carriers consist of a bolt with a central hole and a matching nut. Now when they're in place they accept runners that with simple bushings act as temporary arbors on which wheels, pinions and even escapements can be mounted to perform the task of depthing. It also has a threaded thumb screw which fine tunes the meshing action. So let's get started. Some of the key dimensions are set by how the bed turns out, so I made that part first. The tool faces need to be perfectly flat and true, so I made it out of precision ground tool steel. The only drawback is that it's obviously quite tough material, so a bit more difficult to machine. Mostly it wasn't a problem, but I did have an issue tapping it, which I'll show you later. I cut off a piece of stock and started the job by squaring it up on the mill. And then I found the edge and using the DRO, located and drilled the end holes that will define the central slot. I used an undersized slot drill to roughly open up the slot first, and you can see I'm taking pretty shallow cuts, just nibbling away at it really. The mill I have is quite light duty. I can get good results from it, but I do need to nurse it along when cutting slots. That took care of the bulk of the metal that needed to be removed, but the inside surface is really chewed out at this point, so I took finishing cuts with an end mill down each side to bring the slot to final dimension and to get a good surface finish. The adjustment screw is supposed to run right down the centre of the slot and it will really stand out if it's not right down the middle. So I took quite a bit of care positioning and clamping the work for the next step. The top end was then drilled and tapped for that screw. And at this point I nearly got myself into a bit of trouble. I'm using a carbon steel tap here and it was a mistake. The tool steel is just too tough for it. I could feel the tap was right on the edge of snapping off with every turn. Not a nice feeling. I took it really slow, used lots of cutting fluid and I did get away with it, but only just. Next time I'll buy a high speed steel tap for the job. And that extra bit of time spent on the setup was worth it. The thread came out right down the middle. This is my version of Frank Ford's rotary sub table. I've put a link to it in the description box below. It really makes this sort of job a lot easier. The whole thing can be indicated in very quickly and specially turned spigots in the centre can be used to accurately locate parts on the table axis. And best of all, there's plenty of room on the table for dowel pins and clamps to hold everything down. It took a bit of time to make but it's made the table so much more usable. So once it was locked down, I milled the curves on one end of the bed and then did exactly the same thing for the other end. A 
device. Click deburst and the depthing tool bed is complete. The two carrier bolts were made next and these are probably the most difficult parts to make in terms of accuracy. The underside and top surfaces need to be perfectly true to each other and perpendicular to the bore for the tool to work correctly. So this part will need to be finished between centres. But a lot of it can be roughed out first and some of the basic features machine before that happens. So starting with bar stock, I roughed out the basic shape of the part. Then I cut the threads and then drilled and reamed the central bore. And at this stage I've left all of the key surfaces a little bit oversized. They'll be finished when I've got the part between centres later. The next step was to drill and tap a hole to take a set screw. When the tool is in use, the set screw will hold the runners in place. But it's going to come in very handy at the moment to help finish off the part too. And here's why that set screw is so helpful. I can use it to mount the part onto this little arbor for the next operation. With the part running on its bore between centres, I finished off those oversized surfaces and brought them to final dimension. It's not a very rigid setup, so you can see I'm taking very light cuts to avoid any chatter. The result of this between centres operation is that those two flat surfaces that are critical to the tool's accuracy are now true with each other and also perpendicular to the bore. The corners were lightly broken with a file and all that's really required now is to give each of the holes a light deburr with a countersink. And that's the carrier bolts done. In the next video, I'll make the knurled carrier nuts and the adjustment screw. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later. And if this is your first ClickSpring video, thanks for checking it out. Make sure you subscribe to get regular project videos like this one, as well as videos on a longer term clock making project. Also, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share it with someone who you think might like it, and leave me a comment. Thanks again for watching, I'll catch you on the next video.